I have spent the last couple days throwing together this PowerPoint. Because <clears throat> I had this uh, the genius idea. So now you're you're all you're all hostages here, and you're all being forced to sit through uh, my hyperfixation board dump. So I have compiled e basically everything I can I could find uh, that's 100% canon, <clears throat> which is basically everything from the start of the timeline to right a, right a present day, right before a new person's story mission starts. Because everyone's, every single character has a story campaign, and all of them contradict each other. So none of them are canon. So we're not going to go into any of the story things, because this would have taken an extra week to make. What we are going to go through is every canon event that happens up until that point. <clears throat> and, and very vague detail, and in vaguely chronological order. Because Skullgirls is not like, it is not like dealing in dates or time like at all so uh we only have a vague idea of when anything happened so it's vaguely in chronological order because i have only the faintest idea the, the only like the closest thing we get is we can track things by the cycle of the skull heart but even then it is very much not an accurate measurement <clears throat> now let's get started then so first of all Earliest known events. These probably happened. These probably happened first. Um, we again, we we have very little knowledge on when anything happens, but these these definitely happened first. So, very first event in the timeline: the arrival of the Trinity and the creation of the Skull Heart. Now, the Trinity are three goddesses? Question mark slash Eldritch horrors slash secretly three two girls playing a video game in their bedroom. <clears throat> Whatever they are supposed to be is not clear, but they are worshipped as goddesses in the universe. Uh, it's very clear they didn't- I don't think they made the world, but they definitely want to destroy it. That's like their whole thing. Their whole thing is they want to destroy the world. We don't know why, or why they don't just do it themselves, but they don't. Uh, and they're technically the main antagonists, if you think about it, of the story. But that's also in here, don't I? They also created the Skull Heart, which is, you know, the most important part of the game. Speaking of the Skull Heart, look how evil and menacing it looks. Uh, ancient artifacts can only be used by women. Uh, it can grant any woman's wish uh, that she makes upon it. But if she decides, if the Skull Heart decides that their wish isn't pure, uh, whether that be pure good or pure evil, uh, then it corrupts them into the Skull Girl which we'll get to in a second. Uh, it reappears every seven years. It's unclear how this happens. Because people have just defeated a skull girl, took in the heart for themselves, and immediately used it again. But they never turned right away. So maybe it like takes seven years for it to happen. Or like someone can still wish on it, but after seven years to turn to the skull girl, it's very confusing. <laughs> a lot of you know, that's that's gonna become a running theme uh, in the, in this lore video. Is that it's very a lot of it is very confusing. Uh, but the creators have confirmed it is trans-inclusive. Trans women can use the skull heart. I don't know why you'd want to, but you, you, you know, trans, trans inclusion. Love that. Also, it is no, uh, no one has ever canonically wished upon it and not become the skull girl. It is, it, it, it's, it is incredibly picky about anything. About any wish. Oh, like, oh, that's secretly, that's secretly, uh, secretly selfish. Fuck you, Skullgirl now. Speaking of, uh, the Skullgirl, mindless being of mass destruction. Hey Alexa, you haven't missed too much lore. Also the, also the person, or the people that the game is named after. Uh, so yeah, upon wishing on the Skull Heart, uh, it decides, yeah, that wasn't pure enough, fuck you. Uh, you become the Skullgirl. Can raise, have the power to raise the dead, float, some other shit. Incredibly powerful. Uh, we only know four in canon. These are them. We'll get onto each of their circumstances soon. Uh, but yeah, very much not a good time, and the entire world at multiple occasions has had to 
team up just to defeat them. So, uh, along with the Skullhar appeared double, this eldritch horror, uh, who's kind of Loki the worst. Uh, she pretends to be a nun, uh, and can shapeshift, and behind her is their true form. Uh, I believe she only exists to serve the Trinity, and she's usually in skull in involved with a skull heart being used. Like she keeps showing up and giving it to people. <laughs> I believe she's also one of the most strong, one of the strongest characters in canon. Considering I'm pretty sure in her story mode she solos every other character in the game, <laughs> and she's also the worst. <laughs> Along with the skull heart it was the creation of parasites and living weapons, which I'm. Which is suggested to have been a cause and effect sort of thing. Because the all the parasites and living weapons are both made of theonite, which is this like glowy blue stuff that has something that has something to do with the skull heart. Uh and it's what parasites and living weapons are made of. Uh despite their name parasites uh and living weapons, they're actually par yeah. so onto parasites. Uh they're actually pretty chill, despite their name. Really think of it, aren't we all Skullgirls? I don't believe so, no. Uh, yeah, just by their name, Parasites are pretty cool, honestly. I don't think there's a single person with a Parasite in-game who doesn't- who isn't, like, happy with it. Uh, all Parasites really do is feed on the nutrients of their host in exchange for getting cool powers. Also, it's, uh, Parasites are sentient, uh, and can- or, like, talk on the same level as a person. <clears throat> so you, you're, most people are cool with their parasites. There's also three types. Natural, synthetic, and remote. Here are the natural ones. They kind of just popped up. I don't know how they appeared, because we don't know how parasites are made, but supposedly these ones are natural. And there's synthetic parasites, which, you know, are, are just parasites that were made artificially. Uh, they're incredibly hard to make, and even harder to actually transplant on someone, because they keep dying when they tried it. Um, and we only know of two, t we only know of two in canon, which are, uh, far right, Peacock, and, uh, bottom is Painwheel. Fukuo at the top is not canon, but I think her, uh, I think her Parasite Shimon counts because he's a clone. So I guess that's artificial. She's not canon anyway, so it doesn't matter all that much. Love Parasite's my favorite show is, uh, I can't born in my tummy. Lovely. <laughs> But I don't, I don't know if Shimon counts, but he's not canon anyway, so who cares. Then there's remote parasites, which are uh, just parasites that can function at least semi-independently from their host. We only know, like, two of these from playable characters, and Talison, who is, I believe, was one of the proposed characters for DLC that never ever became canon, but I think they're the background of the casino stage in the game, so I believe they're technically canon. Uh, they still need to be attached to a part of their host in order to, you know, move around and stuff, but they're technically remote. As for playable characters, we only have the bunny there as, An as Annie's uh, parasite, and that's her right eye in its mouth. Um, and Sekhmet, which is the skeleton, which I believe has replaced... Um, has replaced Eliza's skeleton. Uh, and is able to leave her body because it's still connected to her. Uh, then there's Talison. I did actually read up on him. Uh, I believe he has no arms, and uh, his replace his parasite is the uh, his parasite is the the violin girl, and uh, she gave him her arms uh, that are cursed arms to let him play any instrument he wants, but he turns anyone he touches into an instrument. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, then there's living weapons, which are technically not parasites, but they're made of basically the same stuff. And, uh, you know, they're self-explanatory. They're weapons, but they're alive. Uh, from top to bottom, we've got, uh, vice versa, the big arm hat, uh, that, uh, Sarah Bella has had since she was born. Uh, and then the royal family's umbrella, uh, weapons, which are both alive. <clears throat> and kind of terrifying. Anyway, on to the next canon event, uh, which is, I believe, the earliest uh, thing. The game of Skullgirls. It's a fight. It's a it's a fighting game. Uh, it's a really good one. 
I honestly think it's one of the best designed fighting games. But I'm not, you know, an expert. Anyway, on to, uh, I believe, the first Ken event that is actually confirmed to have happened. Is that Eliza making Sekhmet and ruining everything for Parasites constantly. Just for the rest of time. See, Parasites used to be, like, revered back in the ancient times. And highly respected. And were given to those in large positions of power. Uh, but back in whatever the Skullgirls equivalent of ancient Egypt was, uh, this bitch Eliza uh, meets Sekhmet, the skeleton parasite. Uh, and they bond, kill a bunch of people, and are generally just like the worst. And for, and there's, she's so much of, those two are so much of the worst together that canonically, par that they are the, ca the canon reason why parasites are taboo uh, and frowned upon in current day. And for the rest of history, it's because these two were just that bad. Anyway, on to the next one, which is our our first uh, canon Skullgirl. Uh, Annie's mother, which Annie's the little girl there, uh, wishes, wishes upon the skull heart for her daughter to never grow up. Uh, and, uh, and thanks to that, she is 15 forever. We don't know why she did this. And obviously that was a shitty wish, so she becomes a skull girl. Uh, she's then defeated, uh, but Annie's still here in canon. I believe she's immortal now, and that's her little bunny parasite there. Ignore all this. Ignore that. You didn't see shit. Anyway, in the slightly more recent events, these are stuff that happened within like. Light, like lifetimes. So, uh, at some point, the anti skull girl labs are opened uh, in uh, the Kennedy Kingdom. There are eight of them. Uh, most of them are not plot relevant. There's Lab Zero, which is a bunch of shady human experiments and stuff. Labs one and two are re just research techs with other labs. Lab 3 is, super, is developed super soldiers, which is where Panzerfaust came from. We'll get to him. And he is my boy. Uh, 4 is for uh, fancy weapon and vehicle development. 5 is specialized weapons. 6 is research and a few 1 to 6 are not relevant. They do never come up in canon. The plot relevant ones are Lab 7, because uh, that's where, I believe, where Valentine and uh, Brain Drain come from. And 8 is synthetic parasite development, which is also plot relevant. Because that's where the only uh, synthetic parasites we have in the in the game come from. So, uh, so this is the first this is the first thing we have a time date for. Seventeen years ago from present in the game, the Grand War begins, which is a war between it's basically basically the World War. Uh, there were a bunch of other kingdoms fighting in it, but the main ones that still survive today are the are the Canopy Kingdom, which is the main one where. Uh, the game takes place. We never actually see the other two kingdoms. They're they're not very relevant. Uh, the Chess Kingdom and the Gigan Nation are the other two. Uh, the war goes on for a decade and was not great for anyone involved. Uh, let's go over the kingdoms quickly. The Chess Kingdom is very unimportant to the plot. We know nobody from the Chess Kingdom and we never see it. All we know is they were involved in the Grand War. They're apparently medieval Europe themed, they use magic tech, and most of them are humans. And that is all we know. The Giga Nation is only slightly more plot, -le plot relevant. Uh, all their uh, inhabitants are Gigans, uh, which are big boys, as you can see on the right. And that's like, that's like, eh, that's all we know. Their, their leader is called Gilgamesh. But aside from that, that's all, the, that's all we know about the Giga Nation. The other kingdoms are not fleshed out, like, at all. And then the actual one we care about is the Canopy Kingdom. This is where the whole game takes place. It's based roughly on 1950s America. Uh, it is ruled by the royal family, or the Renoir family, who come up later. Uh, and is the home of the Medici Mafia, who owns, like, who has control over a, a large swaths of the, the kingdom. Speaking of the Mafia, uh, our next canon event uh, is Lorenzo be Lorenzo Medici becoming the head of the family? Uh, he is a obviously Medici Mafia, a powerful crime organization, controls some of the Canopy Kingdom. Uh, very popular with the public because they sponsor a ton of 
Uh, they they sponsor a ton of like public events. They they, they sponsor the circus. Uh, do a lot of charity work, uh, which makes them very popular with the uh, with the like civ with the citizens, uh, especially considering the royal family is a little bit is a little controlling, um, and people don't happen to like them very much. Uh, Lorenzo specifically is kept alive for the life gem, which is that little red gem you see over there. He wears it in a necklace under his thing. He's actually really, really old, uh, but that keeps him young and, like, alive. The Medici Mafia come up a lot later, so don't forget about that. Uh, then another miscellaneous event is Ben Birdland, uh, Birdland becoming Big Band. Uh, he was a New Meridian cop, New Meridian being, uh, like, a big mega city. Uh, all of, all of his, all, he refused to take bribes from the Medici Mafia. Uh, even though all his other co-workers were. Uh, and when he uh, got in their way of being corrupt police officers one too many times, uh, they beat him half to death uh, and left him for dead. Uh, thankfully, uh, Dr. Ravian from Lab 8, remember them, uh, picked him up and he was offered to, uh, and offered to make him into a cyborg to save his life. And he agreed and he is now big band and I love him. Look at him. And now he work and now he's a vigilante, uh, like Robocop with jazz, and I love him so much. My boy, one of my many boys. Speaking of my boys, uh, Panzerfaust exists now. Panzerfaust. Panzerfaust exists now. He is uh, created at some point around this time uh, by Lab Eight, or by Lab Three rather, and he's the only person we know to have come from there. Uh, he gets uh, employed by the royal family. Specifically, the princess's uh, special task force called the Black Egrets. Uh, and I love him. Look at him. He's so silly, goofy. Uh, I wanted a whole slide just to just to do that and to show off that I made this image. All right, now we're into measurable time. Stuff we can actually now we're into time we can measure by the cycle of the skull heart. Uh, so fourteen years ago from the events of the game, uh, Selena Con. Conte, Contiello. Yeah, Selena Contiello dies. Uh, she's the daughter of a long line of famous opera singers and deals with the Medici, and also maybe another crime family. It's kind of unclear. Uh, on her 14th birthday, uh, let's get a bit of order actually. Uh, on her 14th birthday, uh, a hit is ordered uh, on the family, uh, and a Medici. And a Medici Mafia kill squad crash the party and kill both Selena and her father. Uh, and at that time, uh, Double just kind of shows up with the skull heart. It's like, hey, bitch, look who I got. Which is into our next event, which is Celine Contiento, Contiello, uh, her mother becoming the skull girl, uh, and her coming back to life is Squiggly, which I think is a very goofy name and I love her for it. Uh, so she wishes upon the skull heart to her family back which raises her entire family tree uh, as zombies. Uh, mainless zombies, that is. Uh, but except for Squiggly, because uh, I believe her father had the parasite Leviathan, which is that snake boy coming out of her head. Uh, and it was his dying wish to Leviathan to protect, her protect his daughter. Uh, so he grafted himself to her body as she was rising. Uh, which allows her to keep her mind intact and resist the power of the skull girl, which was her mother. Uh, eventually, uh, her mother goes on a rampage and is eventually killed with help from Big Band. Uh, and Squiggly dies again because the power of the skull heart is no longer keeping her alive. Uh, keep an eye on Squiggly, she, she keeps coming back. So another cycle of the skull heart passes. We're now within se about seven years from the canon of. about seven years from present day. Uh, Breowulf, uh, who's like this big buff wrestler guy, he's a goofball, uh, incredibly popular wrestler. Uh, he eventually has his eventually has his big grand final match against Grendel, uh, as you he's the big the big gigith, uh, you can see right there. Um, they wrestle, he wins and defeats both her and her mother, who gets really pissed. Why are they named after famous heroes? I don't know, honestly. I guess it's just a naming convention. I'm pretty sure Beowulf was his... Actually, let me get up real quick. 
This werewolf is a wrestler name. What's his what's his what's his sequel name? We do not know. We only know him as Beowulf. <laughs> anyway, uh, he defeats and kills her, uh, as well as her mother, uh, and he takes her arm as a keepsake. Uh, event soon after that, he retires from wrestling and becomes a Kenny shitty actor, uh, for most of his days, but he still has he still keeps her arm on the wall. <clears throat> And more serious stuff other than Beowulf. Uh, Queen Nancy, queen of the Canopy Kingdom, becomes a skullgirl uh, and ends the Grand War. So after a decade of the war, uh, Queen Nancy is given the skull heart probably by double, because of course that bitch is everywhere. Uh, queen Nancy growing incredibly tired of the war uh, and with so many people dying, uh, she wishes upon the skull heart to end the war. And nothing seems to have happened. It seems to happen when she does it. Uh, the skull cart then becomes a part of her. But nothing really happens for a good couple years. Uh, eventually, after no changes and having her second daughter, Umbrella, uh, she suddenly uh, realizes that she has to become the skull girl in order to unite uh, the three kingdoms against herself. Uh, and with that, she transforms, uh, I'm not sure how willingly, into the skull girl. Uh, it may have just happened. By the way, she eventually turns into the Skull Girl. Uh, and the Free King. Uh, who it, she's also becomes. She also becomes one of the most powerful Skull Girls in recorded history. And forces all three kingdoms to band together in order to bring her down. Speaking of, Queen Nancy is defeated about seven years ago. Uh, she's defeated. She's. Uh, after everyone is forced to come together against her. Against her uh, they all band together. It's a it's a fucking bloodbath. So many people die, uh, and tons of little kingdoms and communities are wiped off the map, uh, and end up and end up creating no man's land. Though eventually she did get her wish. And after uh, after her death, uh, the free kingdoms that were originally at war uh, settle into an uneasy peace. Uh, and with and with her defeat, the skull heart is destroyed. But you know, you can't keep it down that easy. It comes back every seven years. Uh, speaking of no man's land, no man's land exists now. Uh, the remains of the countries that were destroyed during the fight against Queen Nancy. Uh, it sits right between the three kingdoms uh, that we talked about earlier, uh, and it is full of bandits and war refugees. It's a very not nice place to live. Anyway, now we're getting into less than a year ago. This is all this. This is all the stuff that has happened recently within canon, uh, as when the game starts for every character's route. These all happened relatively close to each other. Uh, so Patricia and Marie meet. These are two uh, orphans from the war, uh, two little girls, and they're both adorable. Uh, both are, both are orphaned from the war. Uh, and desperately seeking, desperately seeking refuge. Uh, they take a refuge in an orphanage in No Man's Land, uh, and basically end up becoming big sisters to the rest of the orphans. Uh, but eventually, the orphanage is attacked by Medici slavers, uh, and both attempt to escape. Marie manages to escape, and Patricia very much does not. Uh, scared and alone, Marie uh, finds a church to the Trinity, uh, and stumbles upon Double with a skull heart. In desperation, she wishes on the skull heart for the strength to save uh, Patricia uh, and take revenge on the Medici Mafia. Uh, and with that, she becomes the skull girl. She's able to resist the corruption. Usually skull girls can't think for themselves. They basically lose all of their personality and stuff uh, the moment they become the skull girl. But Marie is for some reason strong enough uh, to keep her mind intact, at least for now. Uh, well, she goes on her well, she goes on her war path against the Medici Mafia for what they've done to her. Speaking of Patricia, uh, Patricia is taken a new meridian by the slavers and horribly mutilated for what for attempting to escape, and is then just left for dead on the streets. She loses both her arms and both her eyes in the process. Thankfully, she is also found by uh, Lab Eight, the same people who rescued Big Band, 
and given two artificial parasites of the Argus, the Argus system and the Avery units, uh, which are both synthetic parasites. Uh, the Argus system is the little. The Argus system is the the metal arms and the eyes. Uh, she's able to see see through the eyes on her arms, uh, and the Avery unit uh, lets her bend reality, which is how she accidentally created her little gang of cartoon characters that follow her around. Uh, and she just chills at lab eight now. Uh, a little background for what we're about to go into. This is the last hope. Uh, they're basically the Black Ops division of all the anti Skullgirl labs. Uh, they're setting out on missions uh, to do stuff that are not so sanitary. Uh, they're also all named after holidays. Uh, the current the current members, as of present, it's implied there's been a lot of different members over the years, uh, but the current members of the Last Hope, from top left to bottom right, and the little pictures to the right, are Valentine, Christmas, Patty, Easter, and Hallow. Which are obviously Valentine's Day, Christmas, uh, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, and Halloween. Uh, sp uh, don't get too attached to them because uh, the Last Hope is wiped out. Uh, the Last Hope is sent to defeat Marie after she becomes a Skull Girl, and she absolutely annihilates all of them except Valentine. Uh, when she's about to uh, execute Valentine along with the rest, uh, to send her to the rest of her force, uh, Double convinces her. Uh, to keep Valentine, to uh, because she might be useful, uh, because she is a ninja. Uh, and Valentine agrees, and is now forced to work under Marie. Valentine is not a very good person, but even she's not particularly thrilled about this arrangement. Uh, anyway, moving away from the Skullgirl for a moment, uh, the Fishbone Gang rob the Medici's. The Fishbone Gang are a small-time gang from Little Innsmouth, which is in the Canada Kingdom. Uh, they're all fishmen, except for Nadia Fortune, who is the little cat girl. And can we just appreciate her on the on the bottom right image? <laughs> like how small she is. I love her so much. But uh, they find her as a kitten, and they raise her. <clears throat> uh, and they raise her. Uh, and their little gang. Uh, and, one, and one day, close to present, they decide they're going to steal from the Medici Mafia. So they break into the head of the family, Lorenzo's house, like his big tower, steal a bunch of his shit, and Nadia manages to swipe the life gem from him. And he is very much not happy about that, because without it, he's going, he rapidly ages and is going to die soon. Uh, so the Medici hunt down and kill the entire Fishbone gang, including Nadia. Uh, but before they do, Nadia swallows the life gem. Uh, and that keeps her alive. So she kind of just pulls herself back together after that uh, and becomes Miss Fortune. Which I think is a little, at least a little funny. So she's basically an immortal zombie now. And uh, Lorenzo is desperate to get the life gem back or he's going to die soon. Which is why he sends out Sarah Bella. This is, this is Sarah Bella. Um, my personal main. <laughs> Graph was forever. Um, performer for a Medici-funded circus, which is secretly a hiring ground for potential hitman. Uh, she was... Uh, Sarah Bella herself was a refugee from No Man's Land, who was taken in by one of Lorenzo's three sons, uh, Vitali Medici, uh, and basically raised as her adopted... Uh, basically raised as his adopted daughter. Uh, and she were, she's basically his personal bodyguard at this point. Uh, and she is sent to get the life gem back from Miss Fortune. Uh, also, Eliza is blackmailed by the Medicis, because fuck this bitch. Uh, Sekvin makes her immortal, and she's been switching identities for centuries now. Uh, her current identity is a New Meridian singer, uh, who is very popular. And does charity work uh, by getting uh, blood drives for people. Uh, pretending she's going to send it to the hospital, but then just uh, use it to feed her parasite. Uh, the Medici Mafia find out about this and blackmail her into working for them. Uh, next up, Carol, this this, this little normal schoolgirl uh, who is best friends with Philia, who we'll get to in a second. Uh, she is kidnapped by Lab Zero uh, and experimented on, uh, and has two artificial paras synthetic parasites. Uh, 
basically like strapped to her, which are the spikes coming out of her body and the giant fuck off fan. Uh, and she is also just filled with hate, like just a constant state of rage. Uh, this causes her to become pain wheel, uh, and she is forced to go after the skull girl uh, by Lab Zero. Speaking of Philia, Philia is, Philia is the daughter of Marcus Medici, uh, one of his, one of Lorenzo's free sons, uh, who tried to get out of the mafia life. Uh, he w met a woman. Uh, they settled down in the suburbs. Uh, and he tried to cut all contact with the gang. Uh, Philia went, tried to go to school like normal, uh, but nobody wanted to talk to her because she was the granddaughter of a mafia boss. Except Philia. Except Carol. They become best friends, and it's kind of adorable. Uh, when Marie shows up in the Canopy Kingdom, uh, she attacks Maplecrest, uh, and Philia loses both her parents. Uh, because they were affiliated with the Medici Mafia, and Marie is just on a warpath, killing anyone even even slightly related to them. Uh, thankfully, before her parents were killed, she took in Samson, uh, who is, you can see here, is both attached is attached to a dog. Uh, she, she keeps Samson a secret from her parents and just keeps the dog, uh, but when her family are killed, uh, Samson attaches herself to Felia's hair uh, to protect her, but she loses her memories in the process. Upon waking up without her memories, uh, her and Samson head out to find the Skull Heart to wish to get her memories back. Uh, remember Beowulf? He's, he's back. Uh, eventually, at some point around this time, Beowulf comes out of retirement after finding out that in his big champion match that's put him in the history books with his fight against Grendel and his mother, uh, that Grendel was actually drugged up before the match uh, as propaganda, uh, as pro- uh, Canopy Kingdom propaganda, because that match took place during the war. But finding out that his that his big match, that his crowning achievement in life was a lie, he comes out of retirement and decides to defeat the Skull Girl uh, to put, to prove that he's the real deal. Uh, then we have a couple more miscellaneous events. Princess Parasol, uh, daughter of the previous Skull Girl, uh, and Princess of the Kingdom. Uh, remember how she had, how the previous school girl had uh, a child? Well, before she turned, uh, well that was that was Parasol's little sister, uh, Umbrella. Uh, upon finding out that her little sister is connected with the skull heart and being called to it, uh, Parasol sets out uh, to destroy the skull heart. And she was she was going on a whole tirade trying to take down the Medici's for a while, but upon finding out this. Uh, she sets off to destroy the Skull Heart before her sister can be turned by it. Uh, and Squiggly comes back. Again. Because Marie raised the dead in New Meridian. And that brought her back. Again. This poor, poor girl. She cannot catch a break. And that is everything that is dubiously canon. Very creative naming scheme here. I know. That is, that is everything that is canon. Everything past that point is story mode stuff. And none of the story modes are canon. Uh, so that's a little sad, but that is, that's where the lore ends essentially. Uh, these two aren't canon. This is felt. This is Fukua, uh, Felia's uh, Echo character slash April Fool's joke that the fandom liked so much that they put her back in the game officially after the April Fool's update. Uh, she's goofy and I love her. And this is Robo Fortune, uh, also goofy, also love her. Uh, actually, I need to show you guys something. I wasn't gonna do this. But I feel very strongly about showing you this clip. Let me see where I can find it. Right, hold on. Where is my stream? Here it is. Right, I need to show you this for like a quick second. You you have to you have to witness this. Just uh, just, just witness Robo Fortune. I love her. Identify yourself. I am more than a robot. Except. 
really playing out there. No, none of that. Just state your name and objective. Anyway, yeah, I, I just felt that I needed to show you that. I think her and Philly are both goofy gals. And I love them both dearly. So here, here's them. And literally this robot. <laughs> okay, now we're actually done. Uh, thank you all for showing up to my uh, hyperfixation lore stream. Uh, I spent literal like hours and hours uh, over the last few days working on this working on this presentation because I am very obsessed with Skullgirls lore because it's a it's a game I very much like. But anyway, uh, that, 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 that is the stream. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Alexa. I'll get back to distributing regular things at some point. Yeah, but until then, bye!